friends, welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lauren Burleson and I am the Canvas Queen. On this channel, we like to talk all things Canvas and I give you some quick tips and tricks if you are using the Canvas LMS platform. So in today's video, we are going to be reviewing how to organize content in Canvas. This is actually a four part video, trying to chunk it down for you guys. So that way you have shorter videos, you can choose which ones you wanna watch. Um, so this is one of four. And in this video, we'll be discussing how to organize modules. Now, of course, if you would, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to this channel and like this video. It just helps me reach a bigger, broader audience. All right, so just to review what we'll be discussing, we're gonna go over course layout, organizing modules in Canvas, assignment templates, and then lastly, we'll go over clickability and flow. So since we touched on modules, we're gonna talk about organizing them all together. What are they in the first place? How do you use them? And then also how I like to blend my Google Drive with my Canvas modules to help me stay more organized in my course and outside of my course. So first and foremost, what is a module? If you're not using Canvas modules, you need to try them out. <laughs> um, a module is essentially an organizing tool uh, that you can organize your course content by weeks, by unit, by standard, lesson, day, etc. There's no right or wrong way to use them as I've said before. Modules create a linear flow of what students should complete. So it's like a list of things that students need to do within their course. Um, modules can also not only just contain assignments, but they can contain files, discussions, of course assignments, quizzes, and other learning materials. Uh, you can place a page within a module that has a video that you want the students to engage with. Um, you can create an entire module for a project, which is something I'm currently doing. So ways to organize them, you can do it by day, by week, by subject, lesson, unit, standard. There's no right or wrong way. It's a preference to you. And I think that's the beauty of Canvas is you can customize and organize it the way that fits your needs. Uh, so you can do it, I have uh, teachers who've done it by week. So they just put all of the week assignments, they you know do week 19, they put the date. That's really a nice, easy way for students to identify like where they're at within the course or if they've you know missed something, they're absent, they need to go back. Um, I've also seen students um, or teachers uh, go through um, for primary, they have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday modules, and I think that's great as well. So basically a day is a module, and with primary, I've even seen them publish one module at a time. So meaning, um, you know, they publish the whole week, and then they actually will unpublish that one week's modules for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then they change them to the next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So just something to think about moving forward. It's so nice that you can customize it the way that you want. So what is a module in reference to your Google Drive? So I really love to have everything that I'm using in Canvas because for I'm a Clark County School District teacher, so we use Google. This can also, of course, be applied to Microsoft or if you're not even using Microsoft, just regular files on your computer. So don't feel like you are alone <laughs> if you um, are not somebody who uses Google. Uh, this applies across the board. Um, so essentially, you have your module. That one module is equivalent to one folder uh, or Google Drive folder. So in just a minute, I will show you my Google Drive, but this is basically how it's outlined. You have your course folder. So here I have last year's folder, 8th uh, grade science 2020, 21, 
that's the Canvas course. And then within that folder, I've broken it down into modules. So I have module one, module two, three, four, five, and six. Those are my units. But then if you click within that module folder, so we have module one, I then even break it down even further into deeper modules. <laughs> so they're by lesson. And I like to do it that way because I think a short, the shorter the module, the better. If you're going to have a really long module, uh, let's say for all your one module for one unit, it's just really, really long. And the, I feel like the students don't feel that sense of accomplishment. <laughs> so I like to break it down into lessons. So we do module one, lesson one, that's one module. Module one, lesson two, that's another module. So it just kind of chunks it up into pieces. And that way they feel like they're getting through the content a lot more quickly and they get to have their badges and accomplishments and they really enjoy that part. So you'll see on the next slide here, within that Google Drive or within that Google folder, I have every single document that my module will contain. So that includes even pages. So I'll even save the page as like a, I'll take a picture of it if I create it in Canvas and I'll import it into my Google Doc just so I always have backups no matter what. But Google Documents within the folder are what equal the Canvas module content. So pages, assignments, discussions, quizzes, you name it, it's all in my Google Drive. So essentially this is what it looks like for every single module. So I actually really start creating my course with Google first. So if you're someone who has used only Google Classroom in the past, you have a lot of Google documents, a lot of the work is already done for you and you just have to organize it and place it within Canvas, which is really nice. Uh, so all of my curriculum I have in Google goes straight into a module that I organize like this and they are able to complete all of their stuff within Canvas. Okay, so this is my Google Drive folder for my eighth grade science class. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a tour and how it kind of syncs and follows Canvas. So right now you can see we have like additional resources, semester one, semester two, and then this semester condensed was from last year when we did distance learning. So I just have it saved just in case. Um, but down here we have the main files. These are like the course outline, the standards, um, everything is placed right there. But then semester one and two, the reason why I separate the semesters is because these each represent one Canvas course. So how Clark County School District likes to set up Canvas for secondary, one semester is equivalent uh, to one Canvas course. So when semester two rolls around, we'll be getting a new Canvas course and all of my material will come from uh, this folder right here additionally. So um, semester one, we'll click in here and I'll show you how they kind of sync along with Canvas. So this, I, I mostly want to point this out because if, like I've said kind of before, if you use Google Classroom and you have lots of Google content, it's really nice and easy for you to just place it into Canvas. And I just organize it a little bit nicer so I know where to access everything for my Canvas course. So we have the units, so I've broken them down and then I've also labeled them. So M1 represents module one, M2, module two, M3, module three. Um, but when I click, so when I go into module one, all right, so these folders right here are represent each lesson in Canvas. So I have module one, this is lesson one. So this is the first module. Module one, lesson two, module one, lesson three, module one, lesson four, module one, lesson five, <laughs> as you can see. And then also we have um, this folder here is the Mars Lander Egg Drop Project. So I actually have created an entire project that is one module that students will engage with. And you'll see here as well, I also place the course standards and goals. And so 
when I enter into semester one and I go to the, the forces and motion unit, each of these folders represents one module. So let me show you what that looks like within Canvas now. So real quick, we will go to module one, lesson two, gravity and friction within Canvas. So let's go see what that looks like. Okay, so here we are in Canvas. We're at my module one, lesson two, gravity and friction. We've got pi to the face as a warm up on free body diagrams. Um, so this is a Google Doc that's in that folder that I showed you in, uh, and now I've embedded it into Canvas. Then we have the um, lesson presentation. This is a Google slide show. Um, when I scroll down here, we have our prior knowledge evaluation. This is a Google Doc that students submit via Canvas. Um, this reading guide, they have a reading guide that is also a Google document that they fill out. Interactive notebook is a Google Slides deck that they um, get to interact with and play with and enter text and things like that. And then they have a free body diagrams. So activity, I give them an activity. This is a Google Doc. They have a self-assessment. This is the, the post-assessment of the lesson. This is also a Google Doc. And then they have a Canvas quiz. So yeah, so very Google friendly. I think Google and Canvas are pretty much a great marriage. Um, so if you liked Google Classroom, Canvas gives you the opportunity to really um, organize your Google content the way you want to. So just to review again, coming back to this slide, a Google folder with all of your Google documents goes straight into your Canvas modules. So not only are modules really great to use for organization, but they are also really great for differentiating. So for example, there is this thing called mastery paths within Canvas that you can use that you have to use via modules. So basically a teacher can create a mastery path or a path within a module uh, that gives students placement of where um, they need to go. So let's say they start with a graded assignment and from there, they didn't do so well on the assignment. They then get placed, let's say, um, to do additional assignments to help build them and scaffold them to the final assignment or quiz. Um, but let's say that a student did really well, they would instead then be placed maybe directly to the end of the module or quiz because they understood the content better. So you can create mod or modules with mastery paths um, with graded assignments, discussions, quizzes, and that determines their placement and where they go based on their scores. So if you would like to learn more about mastery paths, I do have that linked right here as well. If you want to create a module, all you have to do is go into your Canvas course. You will then go to modules navigation tool then head on over to the right side of the page to that lovely blue plus module button. Click it and then it will load for you a new window. Once that window is open, you can then click and give it a name. I will do module one for now. You can lock it, so that means the students cannot access the material within the module. You can also have prerequisites, and I'll show you what that looks like in a created module after I just click add module. So we add the module to create it. It then will look or populate at the bottom of your modules page. So here it is, it's empty. To fill it, you'll click that plus button. All right, all right, so this window right here allows you to add any assignment that you've created. You can also click over here and it gives you some options to add. You can do a quiz, a file, page, discussion, text header, external URL, or an external tool. So you do have a lot of options in what you wanna to add to your module. So then what, when you select something you want to add, you would just click add item. But I am going to exit this and show you how to do a prerequisite. 
Okay, let's go to the, this one, describing motion. And to add a prereq, we're gonna click on the three dots. We are gonna select edit. It will then populate a new window, which again, will have kind of the same format of when I added the um, blue plus button module. So I can change the name of the module if I want to. I can lock that module until a given um, date if I want to. I can add prerequisites or requirements. So meaning the prerequisite is, let's say they had to complete this module, module zero, before um, they move on to module one, lesson one. So I can add that if I want to. I can also add requirements. So the requirements can be, let's say, students must like complete um, everything in order. Uh, so I can select that, or I can also select students must complete one of these requirements. So it just kind of is dependent on what you as the instructor want. Um, but let's say I want them, this is a balloon rocket um, warm up, but let's just say I want them to do the prior knowledge. And in order for them to move on, they have to submit the assignment. So you'll see there's a few options there. So add a requirement, let's just do it for the balloon rockets one. So I can make the requirement, the other options are view the item. So meaning they just click on the assignment, they view it, they can move on. Uh, they have to mark that it's done. So basically they get through the page, they click mark done, and then they can move on to the next thing. Submit the assignment or they have to score at least whatever that is. So one thing that is nice about this is let's say you do a quiz at the end of the module, they can't move on until they score, let's say like a 75%. They have to go back and um, basically review to get a 70% or higher. All right, friends, well, thank you so much for finishing this video. Again, there are multiple parts of this four part series. So if you would like to see the other parts of the video, they will be linked in the description below. Appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time.